Hi, this is Rachel from Ray K Books, and I am with Katie right now from Ray K Books, and we are here to interview Kendara Blake, author of Anna Dressed in Blood and Anti Goddess. Welcome, Kendara. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm very excited that you're here. So, mm -hmm. right now, your newest book that came out is Anti Goddess, yeah? Yes, yes, came so, out for 10th. Can you please give a slight synopsis of what that book is about? Uh, let's see. Well, it's about dying Greek gods in modern times and Ooh. the chaos that they wreak on the lives of unsuspecting teenagers who just happen to be reincarnated heroes from the yeah. Okay. I'm and gonna... so this is this is Greek gods and stuff, correct? Yes, Greek gods, um, if you like the Iliad or the Trojan War or the movie Troy with um, Brad Pitt's ass, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So did you do a lot of research for this book or did you kind of just play off of what you knew and then put your own twist to it? Actually, it's mostly the latter. I'm kind of a Greek mythology geek, in particular the Iliad, which was probably my favorite since I was a kid. So a lot of the first book dropped Iliad and Yossi, so that was not bad. But then the second and third books kind of go a little off map, and I had to do research for that. But it's not like it's research, because it's Greek myth, and I'd read it anyway, right? So. Yeah. What is your favorite Greek myth of all time, and why? Well, okay, I'll, besides the Iliad and the Odyssey, because I mostly like to pretend that those actually happened and are historical fact, um, I'm going to go with the one where that guy saw Artemis naked accidentally because she bathes out in the open, and she was so mad that she had him chase down, he was turned into a deer and chased down and eaten by his own dogs. Oh my god, and that's your favorite? <laughs> it's, my favorite. it's like, just, she needs to calm down. That's If you're going to bathe outside, you've got to expect a certain amount of Whoops, I saw your boobs, you know? <laughs> That's kind of funny, though. It uh, is. That's my favorite part about it. <laughs> so, okay, is, is that is your favorite one? Um, that one about, uh, is that in your book as well? Actually, no, no. Um, I never, I hadn't thought of that one for years, except when the book came out, people kind of started asking me, what's your favorite myth? I'm like, well, really, I like that one. So... Maybe it'll go into a future book, although I don't know how. I suppose somebody could get eaten by dogs. <laughs> it's happened. I've read that it has happened. So, um, like in real life, somebody was eaten. Like, <laughs> yes, um, it happened because well, it was this guy. He was like, it's an Asia or something like that, and he had like seven dogs, and he left them starving, and so when he came home, they were hungry and they ate them. He had it coming. He did. <laughs> he did. So we have... So is, oh, go ahead. Is Anti-Goddess a standalone, or will there be more books? Um, it's a trilogy. I'm working on the second one right now, which used to be called Aristia, but it's getting a new title, along with the new covers. So we don't know what it's going to be called yet. We have some hopes of what it's going to be called, but I, I don't have confirmation yet. Do you get to name it, or does your publisher name the books for you? They give me the best shot at naming it. Um, I named Anne Dressed in Blood, and Girl of Nightmares was originally called The Girl from Hell. Nobody likes the word hell in covers and on, you know, on <laughs> the titles. So we changed it to Girl of Nightmares, which was also my idea. So when they decided to change this one, they gave me a chance, so I, I threw them some ideas. And if they don't like any of them, then they'll throw me ideas, and hopefully I'll like them too. Great. So we have some Twitter questions. Katie, take it away. What's a Twitter question? Uh, so Book Rock Buddy asks, uh, what is Cass up to? I know he is talking to you. He has to be. Are you listening or just eating cheese? I love Betty. She's so fun. Um... I'm not, I'm not just eating cheese, and if Kaz was really talking to me, I could eat cheese and listen at the same time, I swear, but he's not talking to me, and that's kind of rude of him, because I worry, he's <laughs> a good job, you know, so, uh, 
no, I really don't have any idea what he's up to. I hope he's not well, dead. I guess she asked a first part. She said, any chance you will revisit these characters in the future? Maybe a book three or novella? Please. <laughs> Please. Uh, well, since the completion of Girl of Nightmares, I did write a short story featuring Kaz, and it was kind of like the story of um, what Kaz, Carmel, and Thomas did on their spring break before Girl of Nightmares happened. Um, so I, I might... You know, if if he does ever start talking again, my editor was just asking me this actually um, when I was in New York for New York Comic Con. So she's into it. So I'm sure if Kaz decides he's into it, which sounds weird, like he's a real person, but if he's not talking, he's not talking. So. Well, I've I've kind of heard like I've heard other authors say that characters write themselves. Do yes. you believe that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, his voice is, is uniquely his own. And just like Athena and Cassandra are their own, too. But with him, it's since it's first person, it's literally like he's the one talking and telling the story. Uh, whereas I have a little bit more distance with Athena and Cassandra because it's a third person narrative. Okay. They still, you know, they're bitchy right. cats in their own way. I think that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so another question I have, and it's about kind of your past writing, is how long have you been writing? Uh, like, seriously? Uh, yeah, well, how about this? How about two, two questions? One, when you just started, when you were interested in writing, and when you wanted to, per to pursue it as a career. Okay. Um, well, I first, I wrote my first novel when I was in, like, seventh grade, and it was exactly the kind of novel you'd expect out of a seventh grader, um, you know, about horses and, and stuff. And I named, um, I based one of the characters off of a kid I knew. And, but even though I kind of, I always wanted to write, I figured it probably wasn't the best way to make a living and I didn't want to live in a box. So I went to college for something else. But after graduating from college and working in just horrible offices and stuff, I decided that I'd rather live in a box after all, and then <laughs> I really kind of went for it. Okay, so what made you, like, what was the ultimate decision? What made you want to become a writer? When was that, like, what was the final straw? Uh, it was like a, it was a, a bunch of things. You know, I, I really didn't like the job that I was doing, and I'd been working on this novel, and it it was actually agented, and it would go on to sell. Uh, Sleepbox Society is the one that would go on to sell first. But, you know, I just, I really wanted to move to London, so I, I needed to just quit my job and kind of disappear from the country. Um, so that was it, uh, because the easiest way to live in London, I'm not sure if you know this, is to go there on a student visa. So, and, oh, here's my cat. Hello. <laughs> Hello. That's Tybalt. That's Tybalt from the book. You're supposed to be dead. Go on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, it's okay. So the study writing, because I didn't want to study anything else, and that is kind of where it all started to come together. So you live in London now, or... No, you live in Seattle. I just asked. Seattle you that. now because I <laughs> missed the London rain, so that's why I moved to Seattle. Right. So we have another Twitter question from Victoria Scott. Does Anna like carrot cake or just killing people? <laughs> Anna does not like killing people, Victoria. She knows this. Um, I don't know if she likes carrot cake either, though. I don't know if Anna really remembers the food that she used to enjoy. My cats are going crazy over here. Um, um, there was a scene, the only scene that was totally cut from Anna Dressed in Blood was a scene where Kaz takes Anna to a diner and she eats a Belgian waffle. So I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I, was, I kind of want to read that scene. <laughs> Really cool. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was just deleted because my agent oh, read no. it. Like, so what's with the waffle? And I was like, I don't know. I'll take it out. <laughs> so, what do you consider the most challenging about writing a novel or about writing in general? 
Um, that would be the middle. I hate middles. Middles just blow. The beginning, you kind of know where you're headed, and you kind of know where you're going. But the middle, especially, I don't write very fast. I know a lot of um, my friends and a lot of other writers write. They can whip one out in two weeks or, um, you know, a month. But mine take seven, eight months, usually on average. So three months into it, I'm staring backwards at about 40,000 words, and just knowing that I have another, at least another three months and 40,000 words to go sucks. So that would be the most challenging thing, for me at least. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we have another Twitter question. Elizabeth Steert, I think is her name. Will you be attending Book Expo America 2014? I'm not sure yet. I'm I'm leaving my schedule open for it because last year I did go and it was sort of like a last minute edition that the panel that I was pitched for got picked up. So I'm, uh, but I'm not sure. I'm I don't have any confirmation yet. I hope so because it's fun. So your main character on Anti Goddess. Let's say that the character died. Okay. Mm -hmm. What would you write the obituary? What would you write that paragraph? What would it say? Um, if I was writing the obituary yep. myself, uh, let's say, so if Athena died, God, I don't know. I mean, who would want to write an obituary for a god? <laughs> for one, and nobody would be pleased with it. Um, I would probably stick to her highlight reel, so not any of the terrible, horrible things that she did. You know, the cuddly stuff. Like, she really liked owls, and um, there was this one time she saved a city. Sure, there was another time she burned one down, but let's focus on the saving. <laughs> well, because, you know, you don't want the other gods to be on your case, right? Right, and, you know, my hope would be that they're all dead first. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then if Cassandra died, well, that would be much more more sad because Cassandra's much of a, more of a tragic tragic figure. She's already been murdered once. I mean, come on, she should live. I'm not yeah. saying that she does necessarily, but she should. And as an author, you make that happen. So thank you. Yes, I'm trying. Well, I'm, I'm trying, but sometimes, like I, <laughs> have you read Girl of Nightmares? I have not read Girl of Nightmares. Yet. Okay, then I will say no more. Okay. <laughs> Others have, so I'm sorry for the people who I've done that for. <laughs> My bad. So, if you were stranded on a desert island, which character, and I'm saying any character that you've written, would you want by your side? Oh, that I've written? Okay. Um, hmm. Well, I think one of the gods would be the most useful, you know? I mean, they're strong enough to pull down trees so we could make ourselves a shelter, and they're fast enough to hunt whatever happens to be on the island, so... Um, and, you know, I feel like the god could probably get me off the island. So, yeah, I'm going to go with any god, maybe Poseidon, because I've always wanted to stage that getaway that Jack Sparrow did on the sea turtles. <laughs> we need booze yeah. for that, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. The rum. What's a desert island without booze? <laughs> but the rum is gone. That was my favorite part of the movie. I'm sorry. That was a good line. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any more Twitter questions, Katie? Yeah, we have another cheese one. Um, MME Tiffany Rice asks, "Do you love aged Gouda as much as I do? I love it a lot. Just to be clear." <laughs> You have the best fans ever. <laughs> yeah, I think doesn't everybody love aged Gouda? But yes. her question makes me wonder if I've ever had properly aged Gouda. Like, what if we're eating new Gouda and we don't know, we don't know it? Like, how how aged is properly aged? I have no idea. If you're asking me, I, I ask. I, I'm paranoid about this Gouda now. <gasps> I don't I don't really eat cheese. Oh, you don't eat cheese. Okay. No. I'm I'm kind of a health nut, so I stay away from it. Uh, I like, eat a yeah. lot of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> cheese all the time. More cheese the better. That's that's a good yeah, it's a good motto to live by. <laughs> so, my next three questions, these are my favorite questions. 
are going to be about teams and what team you're on. Okay? So, oh. first team. Yes. Are you team Edward or Jacob? I am team Jacob, and I'll tell you why. It's because he transforms into a giant dog. And <laughs> um, I've always wanted to hitch him and his family up to a sled and just take them through the Alps, because would not that be fun? That would be fun. <laughs> I don't know if he'll do that, but it's, yeah, I guess he would do it. He, he would like do a it. Little like Bella doll in front of him. Yeah, if you do a little, if there's sorry, there's somebody right next to me. Um, if oh, you yeah. put like a little Bella doll right in front of him, he'll just like chase it. Well, and he let the the little girl ride him in that. I mean, I guess I'd settle for riding too. Not, <laughs> not just a sled. Doesn't need a sled. Well, he's big enough. He's big enough, right? You can ride him. This is weird. <laughs> okay, I'm going really dirty thoughts right now. Okay, we shouldn't we shouldn't talk about riding really Taylor big. Taylor Lautner? Why not? Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so second team, Team Gale or PETA? Um, <clears throat> honestly, I've only read the first Hunger Games. I know the movie's coming out for Catching Fire, so my husband says I need to read that. That needs to jump to the top. Are you okay? <laughs> that yeah. needs to jump to the yeah. top of my list. But so just going off of the actors themselves, because I don't know how the characters progress, we didn't see much of Gale in the first Hunger Games. You know, it's mostly just Peter, Peter, Peter. Um, and I really like Josh Hutcherson ever since Bridge to Terabithia. I mean, come on, he's adorable. It was a really good movie. It was very sad. Yeah. And number three. Are you team Simon or Jace? From the Mortal Instruments. I feel like I should say Simon, but I'm going to say Jace. I mean, Jace? Yeah. You're the bad boy? Uh, Jace is, you know, he's he's got it. He's got it going on. and Simon is nice, but no. <laughs> no. But no. <laughs> there was just no draw. Uh, I have a... hmm? Yeah. Uh, if you could be best friends with one of your characters, who would it be? Um, Hermes from Antigodus. Have you guys? Uh, mm -hmm. If you haven't read Antigodus, Hermes is. Um, he's well. He's the god of thieves, and he's very fast, mm -hmm. and he's very vain. I I think of him kind of like a house cat in God form, uh, <laughs> and so he's, yeah, and he's, um, he's the kind of person that, well, the kind of God where you would have this crazy adventure with. If ever we went anywhere, uh, the expedition would last over 24 hours, and we'd be exhausted, and I'd have little to no memory of the last six hours. Uh, I might be in a bunny costume when it was all over. Um, he might <laughs> be completely naked when it was all over. And uh, it might have involved some kind of orgy with the entire cast of Supernatural. That's, that would be <laughs> that really out of hand quickly. <laughs> he escalates. That's how he rolls. He just escalates. One ups. So that would be a lot of fun. Although maybe he'd be exhausting after a while. But. I was just like, where is she going with this? Like, <laughs> yeah, why not? If you're going to end up somewhere, caviar, orgy with the cast of Supernatural. Why not? Yes, the Supernatural cast is really not that bad at all. <laughs> okay, so... Bobby would be in there, too. Just a disclaimer. I don't think that Hermes would, would ban Bobby from that orgy. <laughs> I do miss Bobby a lot. <laughs> so, when your cat was like in the camera you said that it was your cat was a character in a book so have you written characters in your life um, that are characters in your books and who are they um, it's only animals um, because animals I feel they have that little bit of magic where they can go into the page and still and it and it's not weird if I wrote about people who were close to me, I feel like it could get weird, depending on what that character had to do. Um, so Tybalt, which was the cat you saw, is of course Tybalt mm -hmm. in Anna Dressed in Blood, and you know he meets a very 
a very nasty end, and I had to make sure he was okay with that. Um, in Antigodis, the dog, Lux, the German Shepherd, that's my brother's dog, and I actually just, um, I held like an Antigodis thank you contest for the release of it, and part of the grand prize was I would take someone's pet and put them in a book. So I've got um, this really wow. cute, really cute little spaniel who's going to end up in a book sometime soon, and hopefully awesome. he has a lot of personality, so it's going to be pretty easy to write him. That's okay. Awesome. Well, when the person emails you, or they they gave you the um, the bio of the dog and how they act, and that's how you're going to put it in the yep. book. Yep. And they sent me pictures too, which was great. So now I can get a really good image. And um, she said that she'd be happy to answer any questions as it goes along if I need some some info. So yeah, it'll be fun. Cool. Are, are you? Gonna, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you can go. Um, okay, so are you going to do any other features like that, or uh, give, not giveaways, but stuff like that in the future? Um, I think so, because I love to give away stuff, but I'm kind of selfish in that I want it to also be fun for me, because I like to see <laughs> the weird things that, that readers come up with. Um, so the girl who won, she actually did um, a video, and a number of, of readers did like fan videos. Nin, um, Betty, who asked the question about Kaz and me eating cheese, she did a great like anti goddess ninja video with slides and sword fights and everything. So, yeah, I'm I will definitely do more of that. I love to do fan art contests and stuff like that too. Awesome. awesome. Who is your favorite Greek god? Um, hmm. God or goddess? Goddess would be Athena. Yeah. Um, god would probably be. Hmm. Aries, and I would not have expected him to be, but now I've started writing him, and I like him a lot. Awesome. So is the second book from a uh, different pers god and go or goddesses uh, perspectives than the first one? Well, you bring in, uh, it brings in a little bit, a few more characters um, who, yes, kind of broaden it up. Instead of just being Athena and Cassandra's perspectives, you do get a little bit of uh, Hermes' perspective, a little of Odysseus' perspective, and then, I just spoiled it, so what the hell, a little bit of Ares' perspective, too. <laughs> it's okay, and, you won't you know, tell anyone. So that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So... Are you going to also, like, with the your favorite god, is that also in your book? Um, well, Athena is the main character, so oh. she, she is. And, yeah, I, I mean, I most of the main pantheon either appears or at least they have a mention so you know what's going on with them. Mm -hmm. So do you have any advice for writers? Yes, but it's usually pretty specific. If people come to me or email me with a specific question about something they're working on or a specific question as, as to them, I'm, I'm happy to answer it. Uh, as far as general advice that can be applied to most everybody, it's just to, um, well, it sounds stupid, but it's read, one, and two, it's, it's write, because half of the... Um, the writers that I know, if they're going to derail, it's because it just never gets onto the page in the first place. You know, they'll have an idea, and then they'll start to overthink it, and then they'll start to rethink it, and before they know it, they've just squashed their shiny little idea into a million bloody bits, and it never goes. So my advice is to not get hung up on the beginning and just get it out there and see what happens. Do you tend to have a lot of stories floating around in your head, or do you just kind of focus on one and get that one out before moving on to another? I have a, a pretty set schedule, and I don't know how I manage, but I'll be really devoted to whatever it is I'm working on until about uh, two-thirds or the midpoint of either a series or a book, and then the next one will start to kind of inch its way right about here, and you're going to be like... I hate you. Shut up. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, just please, please. Wait your turn. To see. But, 
But it's also really, it's a big relief because every time I finish a book, too, if that idea hasn't shown up yet, um, it's like if at the end of the first Antigodis book, it, because I had two more Antigodis books to write, no new idea had shown up, and that's when you start to panic. Like, well, this is the last book I'll ever write. This is the last series I'll ever do. After this, I'm going to sell all my possessions and backpack across <laughs> the Andes. <laughs> Let's but, hope it doesn't go to that. <laughs> So, okay, since we're on this topic, then do, do you have any ideas right now for new books? Like, are you getting ready, or are you keeping that on the back burner? I actually did start, I'm about halfway through something new. Um, it's too new to really talk about, mm -hmm. but I, I know what it is, and I know how it wraps up, which is more than I usually know about a book. And then I actually do know the series that I'm going to start after that as well. It's, um, it's a supernatural saga um, um, with, you know, violence, darkness, gore. You know, the standard. <laughs> the, the standard Tendara uh, book. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so we have time for one more question. Twi uh, Katie, is there another Twitter one? There isn't, but I have a question. Uh, with Anna Dressed in Blood, a really awesome feature of the book is the red writing. Is that something that you came up with, or is that something that just came into the works? How did that come to be? That was all my editor's idea. Uh, Melissa Frayne, she's my editor at Tor and is brilliant beyond all reason. Mm -hmm. And that was all her. Yeah, she said, you know, red ink, dried blood. It just yeah. makes sense. So. Yeah, it was. It really added a lot to the story, I felt, when I was reading it, because it makes you vividly picture her literally <laughs> dressed in blood. <laughs> I really liked it. I thought it turned out, they chose a nice shade, you know, it was not too hard to read, so, yeah. yeah. I like that. Okay, so, giveaway time now! Yay! Okay, so, Kendara is going to give away... Anti Goddess signed, and this is for U.S. only. I'm sorry, Canadian international piece, yeah. but so maybe I'm next time. Flash it. It might be this one, might be the U.K. paperback, or if you want, I do have the hardcovers here too. Yep. So either one, and in order to enter, you have to do three things. Actually, two, but one's optional. Uh, first thing, you have to subscribe to our channel. This live chat is going to be on to Ray K Books once we're done. And uh, second thing, you have to comment on the video. And the third thing, and this is optional if you don't have a Twitter, uh, but it's extra points, is to follow Kendara, Kendara Blake. Uh, and I will put her Twitter username in the description when this becomes a video. And again, you don't have to do that, but it's extra points. <laughs> so to recap, Subscribe to AK Books. Comment on this video and uh, follow Kendara. So thank you so much for this interview. I had a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> this sorry, this contest will end or this giveaway will end November twenty second. I forgot about that. <laughs> so the twenty second. So thank you so much, and I cannot wait to hear more about your new book. Oh. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.